Dr. Joao Song is an associate professor at Governor State University who specializes in restorative justice, which is a really hot topic these days, as critics are calling for a new model of policing in America. Dr. Song grew up between Los Angeles and the island of Florianopolis in Brazil. He was a teen when he was hit and nearly killed by a drunk driver. Despite the seriousness of his injuries, Joao pleaded with the court to show leniency to the driver if he promised to get help. The young Joao didn't even realize it, but at the time, he was an early advocate for restorative justice, a system that seeks to address harm in a meaningful, not punitive way. Today, Dr. Salm travels the world leading lectures and seminars on restorative justice. Thank you, Dr. Salm, for being with us today. My pleasure, Zion. Thank you for having me. First, I'm going to ask you to define restorative justice. We hear the term a lot, and we even see it in play in some schools around Chicago, but if you could just define it for us, that would be great. Sure. In its ideal and broader form, restorative justice is a set of principles and practices which allows us to construct justice collectively through direct participation, engagement, and deliberation. Restorative justice is a value relational model of justice where humanizing the dehumanized becomes a meaningful part of life. I like that, humanizing the dehumanized. So where are restorative justice practices most popular? Give us a little bit of a history on it. Where, where are the restorative justice practices most popular and where do they originate? Sure. Restorative justice practices are rooted in indigenous practices of justice, and also in faith-based traditions. They come from New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the United States. But these are the main practices of restorative justice. If we were to travel all around the world, we would see that there are practices of restorative justice more or less fitting into, the, into that concept that I laid out earlier that are more or less based off those principles. So answering your question, they are rooted in indigenous practices of justice and in faith-based traditions. So uh, tell me, how was it received in the U.S.? Right. So again, restorative justice is shaped and inspired but not replicated. I, I want to be just very careful here that it's in it's shaped and inspired by indigenous principles and practices of justice, and including many of which come from the United States, like for example, Navajo peacemaking circles. Restorative justice practices such as these peace circles have become increasingly more acceptable in practice in different institutions schools, prisons, courts. In Chicago, for example, and its surrounding communities, public and private schools have been using restorative justice practices to address students' needs and concerns. With similar intent, restorative justice community courts are being created in Cook County and in communities like North Lawndale to address harm and needs of the community. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned North Lawndale because my next question is, can you point to successful examples of how restorative justice plays out? So just so we can see how it manifests itself. Right, right. So it, it's no easy task to measure success in restorative justice uh, since this paradigm is established mainly by a value relational rationality where strengthening human bonds and relationships has the utmost relevance. However, studies have shown that restorative justice in, di in different parts of the world, in direct comparison with the conventional criminal justice system, can have a positive impact in people's lives and their satisfaction with the services provided by the justice system. For example, in one particular study, restorative justice reduced significantly the repetition of the offense for some offenders, reduce the symptom of post-traumatic stress for victims of crime and related costs, provided victims and offenders with more satisfaction with justice than the, the one the criminal justice system 
seeks to, to establish, reduce the desire for victims of crime, for violent revenge against offenders. So this is all when used uh, as a diversion from the criminal justice system. And so there are, there are many studies out there. We are still continuing to do research and see the impact, the positive impact, the challenges of restorative justice being implemented. But the initial studies point to a positive take on of this other possibility of a justice model. Well, the one thing that I heard loud and clear was that there is a rehabilitation component to that. So I, I really like that. And it makes me think about just all the talk and, and all the studies now that are saying that the police need to be defunded. We need to find a new model for policing in America. Is restorative justice a viable option to defunding the police? That's a delicate and difficult question to answer. However, I believe, personally, I believe that for now, restorative justice training in its principles and practices might provide police officers with the tools for satisfactory community service. As long as they can perceive themselves as public servants, not as militarized crime fighters. What I mean by that is police officers should have access to knowledge that allows them to think of serving the force, the sole force, as a mechanism to inspire and care, to respect and understand, creating empathy and compassion with those who they serve. See the community, see the community members as citizens, humans who they can build safe communities with, not see them as a target and a threat to their work. In other words, restorative justice would allow police to actively co-create safe spaces with community leaders through dialogical, participatory, and deliberative activities, which would strengthen the communities they serve. Okay, that sounds amazing. It sounds like uh, something that I really want to learn more about, and I'm sure that our listeners would as well. Can you tell me what's on Governor State's horizon where restorative justice is concerned? Oh, that's a good question. Well, <laughs> Governor State University has been in the forefront of restorative justice for a few years now. This started with the visionary work of Professor James Coldren, Chip Coldren. We are one of the very few institutions in the world that has made restorative justice required for our undergrad and graduate curriculum in criminal justice. Mm. That is huge. The students that comes to Governor State University has access to state-of-the-art knowledge in the area of restorative justice, which is becoming more mainstream in the courts, police departments, prisons, and schools. I was one of 25 guests of a United Nations closed meeting this summer on pedagogies on restorative justice for higher education. Mm -hmm. During that meeting, scholars from various world-renowned universities share their experience of teaching restorative justice in higher education in universities. We discussed its impact of implementing, implementing restorative justice in communities and institutions, such as the courts, schools, police departments, and so forth, mm -hmm. as they incrementally adapt to this new paradigm of justice, since these institutions are beginning, incrementally beginning to adapt to restorative justice. During that meeting, I shared how we at Governor State University have been using social pedagogy to educate our students, which includes the knowledge that they have and that they bring to that educational process. So the students bring in their knowledge regarding social, distributive, environmental injustices, and we have great discussions around that. This allows students to learn the process of what justice should look like in the future. So it's a truly a, a doing restorative justice while learning about <laughs> restorative justice kind of uh, process. It's, it's quite uh, remarkable how many students take restorative justice to heart and go out into the world and and make a difference. 
Finally, Governor State University will launch a unique certificate program on restorative justice. The certificate program is catered to bring local and international community leaders together to co-create spaces through dialogue to address social, economic, environmental injustices, inspiring future generations to be agents of change in being with the world. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you for your thoughtful insights and your expertise on this, Dr. Song. My pleasure, Dan. It was a pleasure talking with you. Likewise, thank you for the opportunity.